Hey, what's going on? This is Ryan Nolting here. We're going to do a, a second episode of The Outsiders. The Outsiders is a show that focuses on underappreciated and kind of under the radar uh, musicians, uh, maybe that have uh, not been given the due that they deserve. Uh, last week we did Phil Lynott from, from Thin Lizzy. By the way, subscribe to my channel if you like this content. We have daily content here, ranking albums, album reviews, concert reviews. Um, the second episode here is going to focus on Ronnie James Dio. Of course, the voice of Elf, Rainbow, Black Sabbath after Ozzy Osbourne left, and Dio. Um, that voice, that huge operatic voice even um he's a, a heavy metal icon he sings songs for the outsider for the guy that's the last in line so that they can dream make their dreams come true ronnie was born in 1942 in new hampshire the family uh, moves to cortland new york which is upstate um, you know, he's an altar boy growing up. He's a devout Catholic growing up. He's a big time reader growing up. He learns to play trumpet in the, in the fifties. He's the president of his class. Um, oh, born, uh, Ronnie Petavona. Uh, he changes his name to Ronnie Dio cause it sounds better, right? Uh, forms a band called Ronnie and the Red Caps. This is 1959. You know, they're doing doo-woppy stuff uh, similar to the music of the time. Bobby Darren or, you know, the, the Everly Brothers. This is 59. He's, he's recording singles on small labels. Um, you know, the Beatles come out. He forms a, another band called uh, Ronnie Dio and the Prophets. They're learning every Beatles song. They're doing parties. They're playing bar mitzvahs. They're doing dances. Um, you know, he's on bass, he's singing. He has a voice, if you listen to some of the old recordings, that is right up there with almost like a Tom Jones. You know, he can, he's a crooner in the sense that he can, he, he, he has a gift. Uh, he attributes it, some of it to his trumpet playing, you know, that abdomen push that allows for you to have a voice like that. It's not a falsetto, it, it's, a, it's a real full voice. Um, forms the Electric Elves. The Electric Elves uh, tour up and down the East Coast. Again, Ronnie playing bass and singing. They go out to Detroit. In 1968, they're involved in a terrible car accident that uh, kills one of their members. Ronnie, Ronnie almost dies. He had 100 stitches in his, in his forehead. His scalp was pulled all the way back. You know, at this point, he has to make a decision. You know, he, he could go to college. He could become a, a, a dentist or whatever he wants to do. He's a very intelligent man, but he decides to push forward and the electric elves become elf. They write some demos. Um, you know, music at this time in the, in the later sixties is, is becoming heavier, uh, you know, with your deep purples and your Led Zeppelins and your cream, they love deep purple. It just so happens that Roger Glover and Ian Pace from Deep Purple want to start their own record label, you know, th with, with Columbia and CBS and Clive Davis. They want to find artists that they can, that they can nurture and bring into the fold. They do some recordings. Glover and Pace like the music. They record this album in 1972, Elf, that is Ronnie on the cover, actually. Um, and it's only natural for them to now be a support or opening band for multiple Deep Purple tours from 72, 73, 74. And that's what happens here. You know, after Ian Gillen leaves Deep Purple, Richie Blackmore, the founding guitar player of Deep Purple, he's not as enamored with David Coverdale and Glenn Hughes' style of rock. They're getting too funky in Purple. He likes Ronnie. He likes this band Elf that's been opening up. So 1975, Richie Blackmore and the members of ELF, including Ronnie James Dio, put out this classic album, Richie Blackmore's Rainbow. This is the record with The Man on the Silver Mountain. This has 16th century green sleeves on it. This has uh, 
Temple of the King, which I recommend that you listen to. You know, before with Zeppelin, before with with Deep Purple and Cream, you know, heavy music is deeply rooted in the blues, the American blues. This music's more rooted in classical music. They're breaking new ground here in 1975. Um, you know, again, listen to the Temple of the King. They uh, go on to produce what I consider the best heavy rock or heavy metal album ever. They've gotten rid of the guys from Elf. Ronnie is still the singer. Richie Blackmore's obviously still the guitar player. They bring in Jimmy Bain on bass. They bring in Cozy Powell on drums, who was in the Jeff Beck group. This album, Rainbow Rising, is a landmark album. They are the biggest band in Asia. They are bigger than the Rolling Stones in Japan. They are huge in Germany. They are huge all over all the UK, okay? They haven't quite broken America. Uh, this song, The Light and the Black, uh, Stargazer. Stargazer is one of the greatest songs of all time in any genre. I want you to listen to that. L listen to the power that he's singing. Again, th this is some mystical stuff here. You know, he's singing about, you know, uh, singing about classical times and, 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 and demons and wizards and, and things to a certain extent. Um, Richie Blackmore has, has not broken America. Richie Blackmore is longing for a hit. You know, um, he, they do another album after this called Long Live Rock and Roll. It's got the song Gates of Babylon on it, which is unbelievable. Again, Blackmore's wanting that hit. He says, won't we record the cover, the Jeff Ballard song, Since You've Been Gone? Since you've been gone, since you've been gone, out of my head, can't take it. Ronnie James Dio says, absolutely not. I'm not singing love songs. We have a thing here that's working. And Ronnie gets fired by Blackmore. Blackmore picks up Graham Bonnet. They record that song. It is a hit in the United States. Rainbow does go on to have success in the United States. You know, they're not as big as some other bands in, in, the, in the metal genre, the hard rock genre, but they do have success. Ronnie's been fired. Okay, meanwhile, Ronnie's married his wife, Wendy. She was a waitress at the Rainbow Bar and Grill on Sunset Strip, which is still there. Try the mozzarella sticks at the Rainbow sometime. It's a great bar to get a drink. It's still the same. Ronnie's been fired. They are broke. Ronnie receives no royalties from, from, from Rainbow until after he dies in 2010. They literally have $800 to their name. They don't even own the house that they live in in California. Ronnie goes to the Rainbow. Ozzy Osbourne has recently been kicked out of Black Sabbath. Who's at the Rainbow? Tony Iommi, the founding guitar player. They sit down and have a couple drinks together. And the next day they go to a studio space and flesh out a song called Children of the Sea. Ronnie James Dio has now joined Black Sabbath, right? The godfathers of metal. And they put out this seminal record called Heaven and Hell in 1980. Uh, Neon Knights, Children of the Sea. Um, the, the title track, Heaven and Hell. You know, the world is filled with kings and queens who... <laughs> Steal your soul and rob your dreams. It's heaven and hell. I mean, it's, this is incredible. Um, they follow that up with 81's Mob Rules. They put out Live Evil. Ozzy's thing in the band was that was running around like this, showing a peace sign when he's on stage and doing his dumb dancing. Ronnie decides to do this and creates this symbol when he's singing. This is the old thing his grandmother used to do. Again, they're Catholics. When his grandmother were walking down the street, uh, if she saw somebody that she was unsure of, she may do this to ward off the, the, the demons or, 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 or to keep somebody away who might be naughty or bad. 
Ronnie takes this, and, and this symbol becomes a trademark of Dio, right? Um, he, uh, you know, he, he shows that symbol in his career every time he performs. Um, again, Heaven and Hell, Mob Rules, Live Evil comes out. Ronnie's taken over this band, Sabbath. This is a band that Geezer Butler and Bill Ward and Ozzy and Tony Iommi had founded. Tony Iommi is, frankly, maybe not getting this spotlight, right? Everybody's looking at Dio doing this. They start arguing. Drugs are involved. Cocaine and alcohol is involved. Bill Ward quits after this album. He's not even on Mob Rules. Vinny Apice joins on drums, who's also a New Yorker, along with, with Dio. And during the uh, sessions of, of mixing the live album Dream Evil, Ronnie quits. He's out of Elf. He's out of Rainbow. Now he's quit Black Sabbath. Um, what does he do? He pulls his bass out from his old Elf days. And he starts writing. And he forms a band with Vinny Epicy called Dio. Uh, they start searching for a lead guitar player. Because in the 80s, you have to have that definitive shredding guitar player. They find a man named Vivian Campbell, an Irishman, and they put out Holy Diver in 83. Uh, Ronnie writes the song Holy Diver. dun da da dun da da dun 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 da da On bass. Um, Rainbow in the Dark. Is that song about... Is that song about Richie? You're just a rainbow in the dark. Maybe. I always kind of thought maybe it was about Richie Blackmore. Stand up and shout. You know, they finance. Wendy is now the manager. His wife is the manager. Um, they finance this tour. They have to put their house up just to, just to record this album and to finance the tour. They do it themselves. They, they've rebuilt themselves. This is a huge success. The second album, Last in Line, comes out in 84. The title track, obviously, is great. The song We Rock is amazing. They're arena rock gods at this point. By the way, that uh, beast is called Murray. He's on every one of their albums. Sacred Heart comes out in 85. Vivian Campbell leaves after that. Okay. People think that Ronnie's a little bit of a control freak and a perfectionist. Uh, Dream Evil comes out in, in 87. They have a lots of success. In 1991, he rejoins Iomi and Geezer Butler in Sabbath. And they do a great album called uh, Dehumanizer. Uh, listen to the song I off that album. I. Just the one letter um you know what happens in the early 90s to a lot of metal bands is grunge music comes out grunge music kind of just resets the landscape of music out with the old dinosaurs of rock and with this pearl jam thing and this nirvana thing you know even though soundgarden and alice in chains are basically heavy metal they're from seattle so somehow they're cool right and that's the new push um, he goes, Dio and, uh, the band Dio goes on to playing clubs again. I mean, they're playing, uh, you know, your Mississippi Nights or your small Fillmore type theaters, but they're still doing it. You know, Ronnie, Ronnie was there to the, to the last autograph was signed. You could meet Ronnie and five years later, meet him backstage or in the parking lot and he'd remember your name. He would remember that, oh, wasn't your sister Susan sick? How is she doing? You know, people were stunned that he was so thoughtful. Um, you know, in the in the new millennium, there's a resurgence of some of this music. Um, you know, we're out of this grunge world. We're in the post-metal, new metal world. And, and all these bands have resurgent. You know, they'll package them up with Iron Maiden or Priest and do a tour um, Ronnie was a spokesman for, for the outsider. And he sang about that guy that's last in line. He sang about believers. 
There's a documentary called Believers Never Die or Dreamers Never Die that just came out recently that I highly recommend. It's on Showtime. It's incredible. Um, again, in 07, he gets back together with Black Sabbath because Ozzy Osbourne and Sharon won't let him call it Black Sabbath. They have to call it Heaven and Hell. This album is incredible. Uh, the Devil You Know. This is a fantastic album. They go out on tour. I end up seeing them uh, with Queensryche and Alice Cooper. I had to go by myself because I couldn't find anybody that wanted to see Black Sabbath, right? Um, Ronnie's having pains, abdominal pains prior to shows. The guys in Sabbath, Geezer and Tony are saying, go, go to the doctor. He said, no, it's just indigestion. He'll go perform and kick some ass, come back and he's doubled over in pain. Well, it comes out he's suffering from stomach cancer. Um, you know, he's um, he's 68 years old. And uh, he finally succumbs to cancer in May of 2010. Black Sabbath gets inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Ronnie James Dio is not included. Of course, Dio is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Of course, Rainbow is not in the Rock and Roll Fame. You know, this music been marginalized, and you know Ronnie, to a certain extent, has been mar marginalized. Um, he was truly amazing, on stage, off the stage. Listen to some of these albums. Listen to Rainbow Rising. Listen to the song "The Man on the Silver Mountain." Listen to "The Gates of Babylon." Listen to all of "Holy Diver." Subscribe to my channel. It's great to talk about Ronnie. We're going to do uh, another show next week on this uh, channel of The Outsiders, I think on uh, Johnny Winter. Uh, again, click like, make some comments, subscribe to the channel. Peace out. We will see you later.